Hi there. On the bench is an ICOM IC751A amateur transceiver. Now, if you've tried to adjust the reference frequency in this amateur transceiver, chances are you're pretty frustrated by now, and by rights you should be. Not only do we get to troubleshoot the ICOM, we get to troubleshoot the service manual too. Fun times. Let's get started, shall we? PLL adjustment. All right, that's where we're at. It says uh, reference frequency here. It says we're going to set the display to 8 megahertz and uh, it's lower sideband, general mode. Okay, so we got the display at 8 megahertz, lower sideband, and it's in the general mode. That little GENE -E is in the corner there. The unit we're looking at is the PLL unit, the phase lock loop unit, which is this board right here in the radio, this one right here. Okay, it tells us to connect a frequency counter to R1, the R2 side. So this is basically just telling us to connect a frequency counter where R1 and R2 join. Okay, and it says here 30.7200 megahertz is what we're looking for on the frequency counter, and if not, we adjust L2. So L2 is this little coil down here with a green slug inside. Okay, ICOM was nice enough to furnish us with this piece of paper here that shows us where their test points and their alignment places are and places to tie in are. So we see R1 and R2 side runs into here to here. So we know it's in this corner of the board. So we can narrow it down into here. You pretty much immediately see R1 right here. All right. And then this is R1 to R2 side because R2 is right here. Right. So this is R2. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. So R2. So this is where they want us to connect the frequency counter right here is a trace that runs under there to R2. All right, so at this point, you're on your way, you attach your frequency counter, and your frequency counter looks like that. And then you say to yourself, what's wrong here? My frequency counter has Nixie tubes in it. So then you disconnect that because you think something's wrong, and then you connect up your Tektronics oscilloscope here and check it out to see if there's any voltage there or if there's a frequency there or anything because you're seeing what what's going on and all you find is five volts and you're like what there's five volts there and it looks like DC so you're like hmm something strange here you must have some pretty fancy test equipment at ICOM so now you get out the schematic because you're not getting any readings and you look at R1 and R2 and this is their joining area and it's a 5 volt supply for the oscillator. So it's filtered and there's a Zener diode there and everything. So this is an 8 volt supply here. It goes through a 220 ohm resistor and, and this Zener pulls it down to 5 volts and it feeds the oscillator collector here. And this is the uh, this is the coil that you adjust to adjust the frequency and then it runs out into this it looks to be doing a couple of functions. It looks to be a level changer and also a buffer and then that runs up into pin 1 here of this IC5 which is the 74LS90. So pin 1 is where we want to read the actual frequency here, okay? Because you're not going to read it off of a filtered DC rail. So I don't know what they were thinking. Somebody was asleep at the wheel when they did that. So this here is IC5 right down in here and pin 1 is this pin that's right up at the front here. So, let's see if I can get my camera down in there so you can see it. So we're going to probe pin 1 right now. There we go. And there we have our frequency right there. So my decimal place is in a little different spot than yours will probably be because of the counter, but yours will probably say 30.7200. You'll notice that right at the end, there's a 06 or in 07 right at the end. You don't have to worry about that. They just want two zeros there. So if you can get an extra couple of zeros and align it like this, you notice how you see how the last digit is flickering? This ICOM doesn't have the high stability oscillator. It just has this crystal here. I don't know if you can see that. This is just a crystal here. And this there's a little area for the high stability oscillator here. If you had that high stability oscillator, you could, you know, probably adjust that. So at any rate, just, you know, tune it for 30.7200, and then anything you get after that is pretty good. That's, uh, that's all just uh, pie and ice cream at that particular point there. So remember, if you're going to probe this point, use a very lightly coupled probe. I'm using a 500 megahertz Tektronix probe, and it's also a times 10 probe, and it's just uh, running into the input of my frequency counter up here, and that's what I'm using. 
So that's one point done. So now, the actual problem in this radio, the reference frequency was off a little bit, but the actual problem was the HPL lock voltage is what was causing this radio to kind of sound robotic on the upper bands. So you want to follow this. This is pretty much correct through here. If you're reading just the IC751, the non-A manual, beware. So at any rate, this one here uh, seems to be you know, much more accurate to what you should actually do. So you set your frequency to 7.9999 and then you lower sideband general. Uh, in the general mode, you put your oscilloscope probe to R46 and then adjust C78 for 6.5 volts if it's not there. And then, of course, you go down to the next one and do the same thing in the next one and the next one, but you adjust different points for the, for the different frequencies. You go C88, C97, and C107 as you're going you know, down the, the list here. So you just follow it off in the lines. So what they forgot to do is put another line here and tell you to reconnect your scope to R202 again because here we go to 8 megs, 15 megs, and 22 megahertz. And if you leave your oscilloscope uh, connected to R46 and you're reading at these frequencies when you change your display to these frequencies you're going to have somewhere in the 2 volt range not in the 3 volt range and then what you're going to do is you're going to go oh I'm going to have to adjust that so you go over to L201 and turn it and nothing changes because you have your scope probe on the wrong area and then you've just really detuned the actual lock voltage so you can see up here in this lock voltage set alright it tells you you know for this adjustment Go to 8 megahertz, lower, uh, lower sideband, general mode. Connect your oscilloscope to R202, and that's the far end of R202. That's the one closest to the box here. Okay, and then it says, uh, you know, you tune L201 for 3 volts. Now that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, you have to have it connected to R202 to read anything that's, you know, that's the 8 megahertz. You see 8 megahertz here and 8 megahertz here. It has to be connected to that point. If you don't, you're gonna it not when you uh, rotate L201 here with your plastic screwdriver, uh, nothing will change. And as I say, you'll really misalign that area. So remember to reconnect your scope to R202 for these last three alignments in this area. So that's another problem there. Now one other thing you're gonna have to be leery about is a lot of people open up the bottom side of these radios and they see a lithium battery and they go, oh, I'm gonna change that because it's old. Well, if you remove this board and change that battery without backing this up with a 3 volt supply, you have a new wheel chalk for the next time you do your oil change. This radio stores all its parameters for the processor in this RAM. So if you disconnect this battery, this RAM is volatile. It will go away and your radio won't do anything anymore. It's not like a Kenwood 440 or anything like that when you pull the battery out. You can change it and you just really, all it does is give you memory retention again. This here actually is holding all the parameters. So be very, very careful. If you're going to change this battery out, make sure that you have two batteries, like two double A's together. Don't use an external power supply. Make sure you have two double A's, you know, make three volts. And uh, make sure you tie the three volts into this board where it needs to be tied into before you remove this battery. So there's always three volts on this board. Because if for just a split second that three volts goes away, you now have, you know, a, a new wheel chalk for your, for your vehicle. So I'm not sure if ICOM still reprograms these, but there's a, a couple of guys on the net that sell us uh, a unit like this that isn't so volatile. And I guess that would be your next best bet if you've accidentally erased your, your RAM. So there you go. This radio is pretty much done. Those are the only alignment things that needed to get done within this radio. Everything else is really close. The meter had a burnt out incandescent bulb, so I've subbed it with an orange, or sorry, a yellow LED, and it looks very good. It looks a little bit brighter in the camera than it does in person. But um, now we won't have to worry about changing that incandescent bulb for a long time because there isn't one in there. It's uh, now an LED. So, anyways, I hope this helped with your alignment or with something on this radio. If it did, stay tuned. I'll have some more of this stuff coming up in the near future. Bye for now.